Hello and welcome back. And that's right, we want to talk about a brand new Synology today. How many times have I said that in 2023? Seriously, I remember when Synology used to favour even numbered years for their releases, but this odd year 2023 in many, many ways has definitely seen a lot more Synology hardware than a number of us expected. And today I want to talk about the value series DS223J, their new kind of entry level two bay that although on the face of it doesn't seem like a significant jump over the DS220J released at the tail end of 2019-2020, I will say, thanks to innovations within DSM, is actually a lot more interesting as an, a kind of entry level two bay than any of the other ones we've seen before. And in this video, we're going to talk about the hardware on this device. But on the second half of this video, I want to talk specifically about why this J series device is actually a lot more interesting interesting than some may give it credit for but let's go back to that hardware now unsurprisingly uh, the ds223j is arriving at not dissimilar uh, pricing and structure to other j series two bays that have came before it the ds220j uh, the ds218j and so on and so forth now it's knocking around uh, around about the 179189 it was launched today so again that price might differ depending on where you are in the world but that 179189 dollars there with or without your tax in your local region there um Again, you can pick up the predecessor probably for about $10, $20 cheaper, but as this second half of this video we're going to explain, there's lots of reasons why you shouldn't do that. Now, it's knocking around with exactly the same chassis as its predecessor. It's the plastic uh, white desktop chassis there in the Synology disk station style. So again, we've got that ventilation slit on the side that you're going to be getting. You're going to have the vents there on the side and that fan again. This is not the DS220J, uh, 223J, but it's going to be this casing here. So we just thought we'd use this anyway. Um, and the uh, main bays on there, not hot swappable. If you want to get to the storage inside, you've got to open up the chassis, as we've seen many, many times previously. It doesn't have M2 NVMe base inside. It doesn't have kind of dedicated SSDs for caching. It's not that kind of system. No hot swapping supported there. Compatibility is fine. It's supporting, you know, again, up to 18 TB drives like a lot of other Synology drives there. We're still waiting on them, adding the 20 and the 22 TB drives. Um, on top of that, with this, you can use WD, Seagate, Toshiba, and of course, you can now use Synology's uh, value series drives, the Plus series, the HAT 3300, if you choose, built on Seagate drives. So again, in terms of storage, you haven't got too much limitation on support and stuff like that. Um, when it comes to uh, the ports and connections of this device, there aren't going to be any USB ports. There are one-touch copy there on the front. You're going to have to rely on your USB copy and hyper backup there within Synology's OS, the DSM platform and again connections very little to no change whatsoever it's arriving with a couple of usb 3 ports on the rear of the device again much like its predecessors and also one gigabit ethernet single port there which none of us were surprised by normally i would rag on synology a little bit for still opting for one gigabit ethernet but at this price point and at this entry level I'm going to give them slightly less. I kind of wish they still supported a lot of those uh, USB to 2.5G adapters that are knocking around for 20 quid. But again, Synology has made it abundantly clear they're not going to engage with that market. So again, none of us are hugely surprised. Um, the thing I will say that stands out for this device, although the CPU is not a tremendous surprise, it's the Realtek RTD 1619B. Uh, that's a quad-core 1.7 gigahertz processor. It's an ARM 64-bit one that we've already seen revealed on this device, uh, the DS223, um, that was released earlier this year. And again, there is the 4-bay model as well. But what's intriguing is uh, that CPU, and again, more on that later on within DSM. Um, this system's arriving with one gig of memory included. Now, you might be thinking, well, who cares? It's one gig. You know, that two other two bay you just showed me has got two gig. The majority of Synology two bays arrived with two gig. Why should you care or be excited by uh, one gig of memory? It sounds terrible. Well, um, well, Synology has kind of got into the habit for a while when it comes to their entry level series of only a right, uh, including half a gig of memory, which is pretty darn uh, bad. Now, on the J-Series 2 base, we've seen improvements on that. And although that uh, one gig of memory cannot be expanded beyond that one gig, because it's soldered to the board, I will say, thanks to the way they have really eat the most they can out of these processors, particularly ARM ones there, but any of the CPUs really, DSM in version 7.2 has never given as much as it does 
on this entry-level system compared with the other entry-level systems. What do I mean by that? Well, thanks to Synology making the most of that hardware, this system supports DSM 7.2. It supports SHR, just like its predecessors there. Um, it supports BTRFS, which although on a two bay is not exactly gonna pull your chain. I will say if you're expanding later on from a two bay to a four bay, a six bay or eight bay later down the line, Having SHR support on this by default, along with traditional RAID, does mean that expanding outwards later on will be a great deal easier. But it's a fact that CPU and the way Synology have really tweaked DSM in 7.2 to take advantage of this hardware they've managed to make the most out of it has resulted in this device supporting hyper backup, um, Synology chat, snapshots, um, uh, Synology Office, Synology Drive, Surveillance Station with a couple of licenses included, uh, Video Station, Synology Photos with AI photo recognition on this rather modest hardware, Mail Server, pretty much the gamut of the collaboration suite. And although you don't have access to the more higher end stuff like um, Hyper, I'm sorry, um, Synology Virtual Machine Manager there or Active Backup Suite, for those you're going to need to go x86. I will say that pretty much all the indicators I have seen, and again, stick a big old teak beat seat on this, look like this is going to support containers in Synology's Container Manager, which is a slightly adapted GUI front end of Docker, something we've not seen previously. Now, I added that big old TBC at the beginning there because although um, Synology has made this product live on their website, they haven't added the download for DSM 7.2. From what I could see, it's still listed as DSM 7.1, which doesn't have support of Container Manager. However, when you go over to Synology's Container uh, Manager page on their Knowledge Center and list of supported devices, they've got devices like the DS420J, which has only got one gig, supporting Container Manager, which to me almost completely confirms that this will support containers. So again, when it's got support of snapshots, it's got potential support of containers and the gamut of the collaboration suite and baseline applications and services from Synology DSM platform, which is largely why people opt for Synology to begin with on this 179189 uh, box. That's really good value to have access to Synology's DSM and probably makes it the most fully featured lowest price entry in Synology's ecosystem. We already tested DSM 7.2 um, on a DS120J, the lowest powered NAS in their arsenal. And although it did run DSM 7.2, that system with its half a gig of memory did struggle them and it was doing more than about two things at once. And a number of the applications I just mentioned are not supported or when they are have significantly reduced abilities this on the other hand gives you a very good introduction into dsm 7.2 a lot of the baseline applications and one of the lowest price points to get into that available that's why i say that this is a noticeable um, upgrade at least in terms of usability of DSM compared to its predecessors. Although the hardware architecture is a very minimal upgrade, I would say what, a, what technology are able to do with it is markedly better. And therefore, the DS223J is actually a surprisingly interesting two-bay. Now, is it better than the DS223? No. It's not, because it's only got one gig of memory. It's not better than a lot of the prosumer stuff, the Plus series stuff. But if you want to jump on board Synology's DSM platform, it is a fantastic entry point by the looks of things. Now, again, of course, we're going to review it later on. But for now, we've got a written article linked below that should hopefully be updated with anything to do with Container Manager and other applications and services that are going to be made available. Also, it's worth highlighting that a lot of the features that I talked about are only accessible um, on uh, DS223J if you are running DSM 7.2. So when that does roll out, that's when you're going to make the most of this, but do bear that in mind. But what do you guys think? Do you think this is just Synology recycling old check, uh, tech and just trying to keep the, the wheel spinning in this refresh? Or like myself, do you think this is actually a good example of Synology eking the most about a very efficient hardware and allowing you to have a very low powered, low footprint NAS device and still have access to more than half of DSM's capabilities. Let me know what you think in the comments. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a lovely week and I will see you next time.